Rich, how are you? Thank you for coming. Thanks, Danny. Thanks for having me. All right. So one of the, like I was saying to you last night at uh, Joe's, was mm -hmm. one of the night, one of the reasons I wanted to have you on is not only are you a physical therapist, uh, but you train jujitsu. Mm -hmm. So how long have you been training jujitsu for? I've been doing this about 13, 13 years since I got, I got into it uh, right when I, I wrestled uh, two years intramural in college, and then I got into it when I got out and uh, moved back to East Bridgewater. And Joe's gym at the time was in Bridgewater, so it was convenient for me to pop over there after work. And then after getting... Um, guillotine for the first six months every time I shot I was like oh I gotta learn some of this stuff so uh, <laughs> I got kind of hooked after that mostly no gi but I've just started getting into the gi stuff in the last two three months and I'm kind of getting addicted to that as well yeah yeah what do you think about gi what, what do you oh, like so far about uh, it what do you what are your feelings about the gi first everything oh, I, I was I was a hater because I didn't know it at first yeah. you know, like, oh, what are these pajamas and all that kind of stuff and uh but it was also because uh, Joe's was primarily no gi for yeah. so long yeah so it was uh ignorance because I wasn't you know kind of exposed to it but uh then uh because of guys like Cushman and Talbot kind of got into it they put the bug in my ear and they're like oh you haven't known none of you haven't known anything until you get into the gi so I, uh, I took the plunge and uh, no, I love it. It's, uh, it's a lot of a lot of traps with wrist locks and you yeah. know, chokes and all kinds of that stuff. But uh, it's just awesome to kind of expose yourself and kind of really have a whole new uh, kind of element to kind of learn and draw everything in. Yeah, I feel like uh, the gi too. You get you get to really dive in deeper into jujitsu. Almost like uh, if you're training jujitsu strictly for MMA, you get a piece of it. If you're training no gi, I feel like you get a piece. But then when you go gi, you almost get a hundred percent like you can go real deep into the game. Yeah, I, uh, I learned a lot of my bad habits real quick as yeah. far as with uh, little <laughs> wrestling scrambles you can get yeah. away with until somebody's got the lapel and all of a yeah. sudden you're putting yourself in a choke. But uh, no, it's been great. So uh, physical therapy, what, um, how'd you get involved in that? And uh, like, what, tell us about your background. Yeah, so I, um, I've, I've had three knee surgeries. I've had you know, a bunch of injuries myself. I had a couple when I was in high school and um, you know, an ACL here uh, as a sophomore. And, uh, I kind of got interested just, I was into sports and kind of whatever else. Um, I didn't know if I wanted to do physical therapy or athletic training or some kind of healthcare stuff. My mother's a nurse, so I've kind of been exposed to it for a little bit. And uh, <laughs> I ended up applying to school. Um, then I was like, well, college is kind of expensive. I think I want to join the military. She's like, you're not going to the military. I was like, all right, well, you get to pick what school I go to. So Northeastern happened to be the school. Saw so my uh, my loans after one year, and I said, shit, I go, I better get pretty good at this if I'm you know, going to be paying these <laughs> off for a little bit. And... Uh, so, you know, I kind of dove head in. I'm, you know, I kind of am the type of person that uh, when I get involved in something, I kind of go, you know, full tilt into it. So uh, I went to Northeastern for like six and a half years, graduated, um, moved back to East Bridgewater. Um, I worked at a couple outpatient orthopedic practices, um, one with a bunch of physicians, which was awesome because I got to get a lot of exposure to different um, orthopedic surgeries, you know, spi um, spine, knees, hips, shoulders, ankles, all that kind of stuff. Got to develop a good rapport with some of them too, which is nice for people who go in. Oh, you know, my buddy Danny's coming in to see you for a shoulder. You know, he does Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, whatever else. He's not a guy who sits at a laptop all day. Um, you know, just as a heads up, they yeah. not that they treat you differently, but they have a different um, idea of kind of what you need to get back to, yeah. which is oh, nice. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then, uh, you know, and then obviously just as I got more into the gym and with some of the guys who were fighting and, um, or, or competitive BJJ stuff is uh, injuries pop up. And I was a, a pretty handy consultant in my early years. Yeah. Uh, and now it's become more of a more of a professional thing, which has been nice. Yeah, yeah, because I, I think uh, before I actually met you, before you started jumping more into the gi stuff mm -hmm. to, is where I met you um, at Joe's, but was I would hear about you, like from my students and Joe's guys, both just practitioners and athletes mm -hmm. just saying you know you know how everyone oh i have this tweak in my neck hey rich blah 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 you know and mm -hmm. so i heard nothing but great things and then like mike rodriguez and some of the guys that made it to the bigger shows mm -hmm. um using you and talking about you and that's why i was like yeah you you know having a, a perspective of a physical therapist but then having somebody uh who trains jujitsu that knows the ins and outs of the mm -hmm. common injuries um but yeah, like, um, so I wanted to talk about some uh, injury prevention before we get into like when you do have an injury. Because mm -hmm. I mean, for me, I, initially, I think my first run-in was physical therapy was like I had a wrist surgery, and I remember like, yeah, move your hand like this, do this, and I was like, well, I'm not sweating, I'm not working out, so I don't need this. Mm -hmm. And then it wasn't until I had knees and shoulder stuff that I started going, okay, I'm losing mobility. Let me actually listen to a professional and see what you know, and take their advice and actually do it. And then I saw, wait a minute, like this is working. So let me actually listen to these people. Yeah, yeah a lot of, um, and you know, this, this has taken me a little bit too to be able to impart um, the importance of certain kind of, you know, structural and foundational things, you know, to kind of compare it to jujitsu is, you know, 
you don't just start triangling in, um, you know, umaplata and whatever else. You have to have kind of a foundation for things. Same thing with any kind of movement, any kind of stability-based thing with any kind of injury. Um, you know, it's going to be the same thing preventative-wise. Uh, you know, a lot of stuff that I see as far as, um, or as far as I shouldn't just see, a lot of stuff that kind of I do with people who come in, um, you know, with kind of things here and there is, uh, most of it's a education with, okay, this can happen because of these kind of positions or this happens because you don't have as much motion in your right shoulder as your left shoulder or you can't turn your head as much. You know, it's like the old um, kind of nursery rhyme, the shin bone is connected to the thigh bone, the thigh bone is connected <laughs> yeah. to the hip bone. You know, and it worked its whole way up. So um, a lot of stuff, you know, I'm a big believer in um, education as far as, you know, you catch me a fish, I eat for a day, teach me to fish, I can eat for a lifetime kind of thing. So a lot of it is, um, it's kind of maintenance-y kind of stuff. I, I correlate the, um, the human body a lot. I use a lot of like car analogies, like automobile stuff. Um, you know, you rotate your tires every 60,000 miles, you change your oil, you put gas in it, yeah. you, know, you got to have windshield wiper fluid, all that kind of stuff. If you, if you stop taking care of the automobile, it breaks down. Same as your body. Yeah. And unfortunately, as we get a little bit older, our bodies break down a little quicker. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> And they recovery, take every, yeah, yeah. But, uh, but yeah, so I mean, it, you know, a lot of, um, you know, I see all kinds of, a lot of the common stuff that kind of I come across is all, all kinds of like little neck tweaks and kind of like little shoulder tweaks. And, you know, ironically enough, a lot of the same stuff that you do to kind of maintain your neck and kind of spine health, you know, it maintains the shoulders because they're all kind of interconnected with uh, the different muscles and kind of various things. And it's kind of the same thing we see, um, I see lots of like, you know, little rib tweaks and turns with a lot of the rotational yeah. kind of things. Um, you know, some odd like MCL, LCL, little ligamentous kind of things in the knees. Um, and, you know, and just by kind of get, getting people into a little bit of a, you know, here's a five minute little um, kind of warm up thing to kind of get going. You know, I, I found it pretty helpful as far as making sure people don't have to see me for a lot longer durations of time. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, um, so common common injuries like so neck shoulders knees right those are probably the most common right mm -hmm. so do you, like for preventive ideas like different things people can do do you want to can we can we start almost like top down and work yeah, our way down yeah, yeah, so guess. say like neck mm -hmm. um, so my size my game whatever I was never big going inverted so mm -hmm. I thought my neck would be protected but years of so, people grabbing your head yanking on the lapel yanking whatever you end up mm -hmm. slip this different things whatever. Um, people start getting the pins and needles in their fingers. Mm -hmm. um, so what are what are some good things that you could do? Because also I rem like I would go to the gym and do neck strengthening stuff, mm -hmm. and then you know because you want to be old school Carlson Gracie yeah. big neck mm -hmm. right, mm -hmm. and then you go. All right, I feel like this is actually for me. I started feeling like oh I think this is hurting now more. I can't, now I can't yeah, move. Yeah. I have less mobility, mm -hmm. and um, so what would be some good things, but for jujitsu yeah. to... So, you know, just in, like anything in life, it's, um, it's all about a balance of things, is you can't have too much, mo you don't want to have too much mobility, because those people have all kinds of issues with, you know, um, you know they get you know, contorted yeah, like all the over around. over-flexible people. Exactly. You, sometimes you see them get stacked, yeah. and you're like, oh my God, that's, right. you know, that And they hurts. have a lot of different injuries that are more common with them, versus you get, like, kind of the... The big, thick, like you said, thick neck, thick shoulders, tight, rigid wrestler who's just going to power you into something, and then they don't have enough mobility, so when they go down to kind of move with something, things will tweak a little bit easier. Yeah. Um, you know, I do a lot of, um, uh, I, I learned some of this stuff, and like, this isn't even PT stuff, this is a lot of stuff from, uh, you know, years of experience with introducing, uh, getting a chance to meet people on the mats, like yeah. Steve, Steve Bakari showed me an awesome neck routine that he used to do um, back in the day with Joe. A lot of, um, Steve Bakari, was he the guy that led, like, uh, Spear, it was like a law enforcement yes about, I, yeah, I think yeah. so because he him? yeah he does a lot of boxing with um peter um well, well, Welch. welch's gym up there he used to come down and do some stuff with joe um i don't even know how i got to meet him through joe but yeah, we just yeah. were shooting the breeze yeah, he was yeah. give me some pointers on throwing a hook and blah 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 yeah. he's like you know and we were just shooting the breeze and he was kind of going over some things that he likes and um you know and you know there's a, a bunch of different things that kind of you mess with i mean i'll just even show you real quick one of the things that i swear by is uh you know, with any of this kind of stuff here is just basically kind of any kind of little functional kind of neck rolling, you know, and obviously that can progress to a point where you get some guys who've been doing this for a while, yeah. you know, and they can do no hands or you just take pressure off. But basically any, you know, because this is a functional position where my head's on the mat a lot with different things. Um, um, what would you say for like percentage of weight distribution? Because we I used to do real, that real too, light. and I didn't know if that was becoming like some something thought of as archaic. <clears throat> yeah, it's um, you know, my it biggest. It seems thing, like everything comes around. Whether it's nutrition, yeah, fitness, yeah, jujitsu, yeah. everything seems to just like clothing, bell bottoms, yeah, tight yeah, jeans, yeah, whatever yeah. else. But uh, yeah, so I mean, I always say less is more with a lot of this stuff. Okay. A lot of times, people, especially you know, in athletics, they're you know, they're they're pushed. You got to push harder, and this is the problem we run into with some guys like overtraining and stuff oh, yeah, now yeah. too, where it's you know, there's six days out of a week, and they're training. 
you know, Well, you think, did I do times. everything in that mm -hmm. hour of training I should have done? Right. Did I go 110%? Mm -hmm. And then they have guilt on a day off. It's like, you have guilt on a day off. It's yeah. like, you've been, you know, breaking your, uh, breaking your balls. But, you know, as far as for, like, weight distribution and stuff, less is more, man. I, I'll, I'll tell people who are, who are brand new to this stuff. I mean, you basically almost have no weight on your head. But because my head's in a fixed position now, it engages other kind of muscles. Yep. And then now we get to just kind of really exaggerate, kind of going into different ranges of motion. And so just you're kind of force for flexibility, it. mobility, and a little strength? And or? A, not even much strength with oh, this until, until you get more mobility. Because okay. then you also want to make sure that you have strength through your whole throughout your whole range of motion. You know, if somebody can only raise their shoulder up this high, they can be strong as hell. Yeah. But if they don't have enough mobility and then to be able to build that strength through those kind of ranges of motion, they're not gonna be able to functionally use any of it. Yeah. Um, you know, so just like anything, as far as even with some of the basics with jujitsu stuff is, um, you know, starting with kind of real foundational kind of basic kind of things and then kind of making them, um, you know, a little bit more sexy and kind of whatever yeah, else. Yeah, yeah, kind of building build. off and mm -hmm. that, yeah. But, uh, you know, from there, like I said, I started, I know when I started this years ago, I used to just stay from my knees and just kind of rock back and forth um, I can tell you right now if I don't get a chance to do this stuff um, if I don't have 20 minutes to warm up I almost don't go to class anymore yeah because I get the the nerve pain into my neck I get a little bit of tingling in one of my hands yeah um, if I get my little warm-up in it, it almost never comes it's, yeah. it's kind of like it's 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 amazing just uh, I think especially as I've gotten older I used to be just get on the mat and roll and whatever else and nothing bothered me but now um, a lot of it between the neck stuff and then just a lot of functional rotation stuff I mean I I, I talk a lot about um you know we're all we, you know, on all fours kind of with different things, you know, any kind of little rotational things where we're kind of able to use kind of our whole body, whether, you know, a lot of the stuff that you do at the beginning of class yeah. is real functional with these kind of stretches and positions. Um, I think that warm up's fantastic just because it puts you in jujitsu based positions in yep. order to, um, you know, to kind of be able to get your body, you know, basically ready for competition. Um, but yeah, it, as far as like specific things, it's also very person specific because you have a bit different body type than me and, um, you know, I base a lot of stuff off a, a quick, I'll do a five minute assessment with people, have them move their arms, have them move their head, touch their toes, do different things. Yeah. And then there'd be certain things I'd be like, all right, well you definitely are limited here. This is something that you should kind of focus so on. So almost like like training or diet to specific body types. There's certain things that are blanket for everybody, mm -hmm. but then some that, hey, this meal plan works great for you, not so good for me, mm -hmm. I need more carbs or whatever. 100%, and, uh, and that's what makes it tough is like even, um, you know, a lot of people will go, you know, have different experiences with physical therapists, athletic trainers, you know, strength and conditioning guys, whatever else. And it's funny because, like you said, it comes kind of full circle with th some things that go kind of out of favor. Yeah. Oh, they work back in. But yeah. sometimes it's it's not um, – a lot of people do the, the, the right exercises and stuff. Some, pe some people do them the wrong way for them specifically. And that's where there's kind of a, a niche as far as being able to, um, you know, having had, you know, enough experience with different body types and different people and different with where people's goals are, you know, yeah. uh, going in order to try to really um, kind of maximize what they're getting out of their time too. Because, you know, I mean, if somebody tells me I have to do a 45 minute thing every day, I'm going to tell them to go pound sand. I don't have 45 minutes in a day to go yeah. do a little routine. Yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? yeah. Um, on top of me trying to, you know, go train, you know, take my dogs for a walk, you yeah. know, do my work. paperwork, yeah. whatever else, and then mix in sleep and eating at some yeah. point. So, um, you know, a lot of it I try to really, um, you know, curtail to kind of the individual person as far as what they need, um, but also, you know, make it realistic within the realms of, okay, here's five minutes, get to class five minutes early, do these three things, it's gonna, you know, minimize your chance of having an issue, basically. Yeah. Now, uh, so shoulders, mm -hmm. like yeah. shoulders, you right? Got, you got a fun, you got fun shoulders. Oh yeah, <laughs> my shoulders are bad. So when you said the thing about lifting your hands over your head, the, for years and years, it just I couldn't do it anymore. Mm -hmm. And I think it was from jujitsu plus lifting weights and all that, and probably poor technique from being younger, different injuries like uh, muscle tears, rotator cuff, all that junk. Mm -hmm. So, um, like again, that shoulder mobility. But uh, like, so what are what are things you you like for that? Because you're right. A lot of times, even you're you're rolled forward, you're here like this. Mm -hmm. You know. Um, so what are some good things for people to look at with that, and also not losing the mobility Correct. because. I didn't start not being able to lift my hands over mm -hmm. my head, you know, yeah, so. You acquired it. Uh, yeah, yeah, so over time, it just kept getting worse and worse, and then it would hurt to do it, so you're like, oh, am I hindering myself by trying to do this? Like, I've heard, I've tried the hang thing, and some people swear by it. If I hang, I'll be, I'll be hurting for a month. Yeah. So I don't know if that's something, hey, you know, again, like the old school training, man, just push through it, don't be a pussy. Yeah. Or is it, no, that's not good for you. Right, you yeah. know? And then this is where, um, like I said, a lot of it also is, uh, you know, getting proper instruction with things like you know when um you know i've had a few guys recently come in with the shoulders like pete uh, marinelli and uh, yeah um 
uh, and a few other people who, uh, uh, um, Kareem had some shoulder stuff. Yep. And, uh, you know, and it's kind of funny because a lot of these things seem very basic. And then what, you know, for somebody who's, you know, doing flying triangles and, you know, you know, sweeps and all kinds of different things, you know, arm drags is, you know, you tell them to lay on a foam roll and just move their arms over their head. Yeah. Um, but a lot of times d dissociating joints as far as being able to make sure the neck and spine's in a stable position, um, you know, and kind of moving the shoulders around and stuff. Um, you know, I love the foam rollers and like different things for that kind of stuff because it allows you to really exaggerate, um, you know, motion because your shoulders are made up of basically th three major joints. You have where your clavicle comes into your, your scapula here. You have your glenoid work, uh, your uh, humerus that comes into the glenoid here. And then you have your scapula where it moves on your shoulder blade. Yep. You know, so your shoulders, you know, it's a complex kind of thing. And because we have so much mobility here, you also need to make sure you have enough stability through that mobility to kind of protect you. And that's where the people who have excessive kind of flexibility Flexi, with things yeah. get kind of screwed with certain things. And it's the people who don't have any of that flexibility, um, you know, you need to kind of build it up. So, you know, lots of, um, lots of pec stretching, um, lots of like anything where we open our chest up to put our shoulders in a position to be successful. Because like you were saying, you know, we're always in these protective positions here. And then now you mix in all the COVID stuff, working from home, people commuting, you know, driving places, yeah. whatever else. Um, everything's just very computer centric now is gravity pulls me into this position anyway. So now I'm in this position all day. I go and train. I'm in this position boxing. We're all here all yeah. the time. When my shoulders are forward like this, I got to raise my arm up. I can only raise them up this high because I basically create a me mechanical impingement here. When my shoulder drops back this tiny little bit, it frees up all this extra motion. Um, so a lot of the subtleties are kind of things that, um, once we make those become kind of muscle memory and it's just that a little repetition of allowing things to kind of fall into those positions, um, your body starts to kind of use it more normally. Um, and that's the big thing too, with some of the maintenance -y kind of stuff is it's mostly, um, because we're stuck in these positions for so long, we need to put ourselves in other positions to kind of alleviate all that extra stress. Are you finding that more with, uh, because the computers left all that, that 100%. people are, yeah. And it's funny because, uh, people who you know, sit at computers or, you know, um, you know, uh, you know, cameras right now yeah, with yeah, everything, yeah. you know, then after they do all their film and they got to edit things, yeah. um, you know, everything is even just like driving. If we sit and drive a lot, um, you know, truck drivers, all these yeah. other kind of positions is, uh, these you muscles. end up slouching. Exactly. And then and what you, your body's smart. So what your body does, if, if it starts to hurt your low back, we sit up and we change. So now yeah. my low back doesn't have as much pressure, but now I'm twisting my shoulders. Now I'm all cockeyed. Yeah. Um, you know, you go to raise up, one side goes up, one side doesn't go up as high. And you know, everything's about balance and symmetry as far as kind of I'm concerned with like healthy lifestyle, jujitsu, and yeah. you know, um, you know, work, uh, you know, non-work kind of balance yeah, yeah. with things. So, you know, that's kind of what I try to promote with, um, in, you know, in, in using some analogies with things to try to make kind of people understand different things because, you know, if you start to see how things kind of, you know, inter, uh, kind of interrelate within kind of the body and then you're able to kind of almost troubleshoot things a little bit yourself because you have a little bit of a, you know, an education with things, um, you know, just from a, a quick little, oh, this is why we do this rather than here's a sheet, do this. Yeah. And then you go do it your way and you're doing all these things and we're in this forward position rather than making sure we're kind of in the right spot. You know, that's where a lot of people can do the right things, just do them a little bit the wrong way for themselves. So when you were talking about foam roller exercises, are you talking where you lay on it and you roll just to loosen it? Are you talking where you're doing it where you kind of let gravity do its work? Let gravity do its work, yeah. Put like the foam roller down kind of like the whole width of like your back and kind of lay on it. You could lay on a bench. And like do the, the straight one, straight down 100%, the middle. 100%, yep, because it allows gravity to kind of open everything up here. Um, you know, and it's it's like it's all about kind of moderation because if I if I'm being crazy anal about being in the perfect position with everything too, if I lock my shoulders back and try to raise them up, I can't go up too high either. Yeah. So you need to have kind of that happy balance in between, and it's going to be the same thing with like your hips and your legs and kind of everything else. Um, you know, the other thing too is is also just talking people off the ledge sometimes when like they have an injury and they're like, oh no, it's the end. Yeah, you know, I can't it's all train. Over. I yeah, can't do yeah, anything. Yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. is uh you know there's lots of times where people can have you know, slight rotator cuff tears or, um, you know, a little bit of a mechanical impingement or a tendonitis or a bursitis or an inflammation, yeah. um, you know, or even kind of any kind of little strain or, you know, um, tweak or whatever. And, you know, the problem is, is, you know, the old kind of MO with everything was like, 
two weeks do nothing. So now yeah. it's just going to get stiff, and now you're going to go to move it. Now it doesn't. It's weak. It doesn't move as good. Yeah. Rather than like an active rest kind of thing, where we allow those certain tissues that are aggravated to heal or to calm down, but we don't let everything else get kind of weak and tight around it. Yeah. I feel. I, it's funny you say that because I feel worse on days I take off 100%. than days I train. Mm -hmm. yeah. And even if even if you just modify your training, if you know that you've had a busy week and you still get out and do something, yeah. um, just that kind of just that mobility is important because uh, the you know. Just as we get as we get further kind of down the line, as you start start moving less and less, your body starts retaining that, and then it's harder and harder to get it back. To keep going, yeah. And it's funny where you said that thing about if you have an injury, it's not the end. Train, physical mm -hmm. therapy. I mean, I don't know anybody that's been training for any length of time that, an yeah, that, that, <laughs> that doesn't still have yeah, something. or right. And they're still better off than... Uh, you know, sometimes like, I don't know, go drop your kids off at school and look around and go, oh, geez, you know, people my age are, you know, they're looking pretty rough. So we're, I'm doing okay. Something's going okay, right? I might have this going on and that going on, yep. but, well, you know, I'm still healthy. But um, And a lot of times you'll feel good while you're doing stuff. It's more after the, yeah. or the next morning, like everything's all locked up. And then, you know, it, it's, you know, it's just a matter of, you know, and then that's where like, I'm not a nutritionist, but that's where, you know, talking to like nutritional people with like glucosamines and yeah. joint kind of aids, you know, you, everything's about kind of making, you know, your system operate as efficiently as possible. And that, that mobility, the diet, the sleep, the, um, well, it goes back to balance part. of like mm -hmm. what you're saying, just like in jujitsu, you can't just be a guard player. You got to mm -hmm. know how to pass. You can't, uh, nutrition, you can't just eat crap mm -hmm. life. You can't just work 80 hours a week and not enjoy any right. of have it. No mental health. Yeah. That's funny how like, yeah, you definitely need that balance. So knees, that's a huge one too. Mm -hmm. So knees, Multiple knee surgeries. Um, first, let's get into this because, again, when you're on the mat and after a while, like, you know, oh, I had ACL, MCL, uh, meniscus, blah, 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 and you hear the bro science of just people that don't know but you've trained and you had, you know, every mm -hmm. injury known to man. So meniscus. What is the meniscus? What is ACL? What one's MCL? Because that is, I think, when you hear people talk, that without a doubt is probably the most that I've heard. Mm -hmm. You you know, you would know better, uh, but the most uh, where people get confused. Yeah, in in. A lot of the hard part too is, is because a lot of physicians um, they don't spend a lot of time. You know, they get five or six minutes tops with you. Yeah. So they say, oh, you have this, this, and this. So we're gonna fix this. We're gonna pin this. Blah blah blah. Six months should be fine. Um, and you know, I think time frames on things are kind of unrealistic too for somebody who doesn't do the process of the, you know they can understand healing. What do you mean not not doing the actual physical therapy? Yeah, exactly. So you get somebody who does. You know, they say, okay, in six months you can go do whatever you want. You get somebody who's six months busts their ass and you know does everything they should do. They're usually back a little quicker than that. Sometimes. Yeah. You get somebody who's kind of like oh poo poo and feeling bad for themselves, doesn't do yeah. anything, and then they go back and see the doctor, and the doctor's like oh you should be. Why, what do you mean you can't run? You can't yeah, do this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you didn't do the work necessary to kind of accomplish that. So that's where it becomes difficult because a lot of you know um, a lot of like time frames for people to come back to activities or you know whatever else are predicated on the doctor clearing them um, the doctor clears them based mostly on a six minute assessment where they okay you're six months out you're eight months out okay you should be fine um, you know without kind of doing any kind of real um, biomechanical assessment to make sure their body can withstand some of the you know the the trials and tribulations of training and changing direction and pivoting and getting up and you know uh, you know balancing and different things like that. Um, you know, as far as meniscus stuff, you know, meniscus is ba basically the shock absorber of your knee. Um, you so know, that's the cartilage between between the joint. yep between that top bone, which is your uh, your femur, and the bottom bone, which is your tibia and the shin. Um, you know, what happens with those, and this is why ACLs and MCLs and stuff like that are important, is because if we your MCL basically sits on the inside, your LCL sits on the outside. And we have an ACL and a PCL which sit on the inside, like deep in the knee. The ACL and the PCL control a lot of this rotation where that femur, so you talk about heel hooks heel and hooks, leg locks yep. and stuff like that, um, where that femur kind of rotates on that tibia. When we don't have that ligament stability, what it does is it allows more shear on the meniscus. So without those ligaments, is it basically, it's a time bomb before you basically wear away your meniscus at a quicker and, and pace. Arthritis and arthritis. Is gonna kick in. You only, most of the time, get one meniscus now in life. They, they, are, they do have stuff now where you can, they do meniscal transplants. I had, I had shots, something called like Sir Parts. I worked for a, a, mm -hmm. like a year. Have you heard of that? Like so, they, uh, they put shots like ultrasound in your knee. Um, was it to add a layer? Like, I think it was something like that because it was uh, the, like the meniscus, basically it was arthritis is mm -hmm. what was left, you know. And, and it's uh, like a padding? Yeah. Yeah, something like yeah, that. Yeah, so they used to do stuff called like synvisc, which is probably pretty similar to that. If it, it basically is like a almost like a chicken fat substance that helps to kind of create a little bit of a buffer. Yeah. Um, you know, again, a lot of that stuff is uh, 
But is it like cortisone where it's like, hey, this is going to make you feel good for a little while, but it's not, it's not resolving the right, issue. Right, exactly. And that's what we run into a lot, even with a lot of, um, and that's, it's funny you bring up cortisone because that's a common thing where the, you know, you go in, you want it to feel better quicker. Yeah, so, so everybody does great. it. And cortisone a lot of times fixes is the symptom, which is something's inflamed like or aspirin irritated. Or exactly, but it doesn't fix the cause. So you know, if the cause is something mechanical that we can you know create better strength or better stability around, you know, you can keep getting cortisone shots and they'll wear away. Yeah. Um, but a lot of times it, you need the the cortisone can help get you out of kind of a bad time, but it's not usually going to fix anything. Yeah. Um, and prolonged cortisone use. I'm talking like 10 years of like three shots a year consistently over time isn't good for the tissue around it. You know, to get one a year, whatever else, it's not the end of the world. That's going to be fine. Your body, especially when you're active and moving. Um, you know, but for the most part, you know, cortisone is also diagnostic is it al it allows physicians to know that, um, okay, Danny got, you know, he got four months out of re relief with that cortisone shot. Okay. You know, maybe there's something else that kind of is going on. If you get no relief from it, it means inflammation isn't the issue and you probably have some kind of a, a joint abnormality or you know you have a, a big bone spur you have something yeah. where maybe they have to go in and shave it or cut it out it's funny you say that because yeah i had cortisone shots before like only a couple times because i knew the thing of it's like a, a band-aid temporary mm -hmm. so i had it a couple times i didn't feel anything but nobody explained i just figured oh maybe this doesn't work doesn't for me work, yeah yeah, yeah. Right? nobody told me why well, or now you're panicking going I'm, I'm screwed now i can't lift my arm like yeah. you know, the cortisone <laughs> didn't work what do they have to yeah. do <laughs> um, what's next yeah and you know and that's where like uh you know i i use um you know, I do some dry needling stuff, which uh, yeah, we kind of talked about a little bit. Um, you know, massage therapy, chiropractic stuff is great. Um, you know, different kind of other soft tissue modality kind of things. But the biggest thing with any of those, in my opinion, is, um, you know, those are all adjunctive things as far yeah. as you get the tissue to release, <clears throat> you get the bones to kind of realign better. Is that the whole idea behind the dry needling? So mm -hmm. if somebody doesn't know what that is, uh, what, what, how do you explain that? So it basically, so when you go to a chiropractor, they, 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 when they get their correction, I'm not going to say crack you because that's not chiropractic terms. They get yeah. their correction. Whether you get a couple cracks, sometimes it doesn't take a crack to get, uh, it doesn't take that audible crack to have a, a, a correction within the spine. Is it creates basically um, a neurological kind of reset. Yeah. Uh, which allows, um, you know, better kind of nerve health with like blood flow to the nerves yeah. and all kinds of stuff. So with the dry needle, the needle we take, uh, it's called a myofilament needle. It's an acu, it's the same as an acupuncture needle. Acupuncturists get all pissed off if yeah, you start yeah. calling it acupuncture needle. But then it's like a, like a tens machine connected to it, right? So you can you can also hook up electricity to them too. Yeah. So, and I'm not an acupuncturist, but as far as with the, the dry needling, is we base it off of a, a lot of trigger points and kind of um, you know the feels of different soft tissues. As far as if you feel there's restrictions in kind of certain points, you can basically facilitate what I consider a neurological reset within that muscle or yeah. that band of tissue, and you get one of like two or three different reactions. A lot of times. Our muscles, you know, they're, they're, uh, they're fibers. So if I do a bicep curl, my muscle shortens and it lengthens. So those fibers need to interlock and then they need to stretch. If we have tissue that's not working the right way, a big knot in our neck or whatever else, is those, those fibers now interlock. So now when I go to move them, they kind of shear. They don't, uh, they don't glide nice and easy. That also creates kind of asymmetrical kind of, um, you know, tendencies within the tissue. We get kind of these um, little waves and things. So basically what the needle does is the needle hits the, the soft tissue it creates a lot of times this twitch or the spasm reaction, which basically acts as like a reset to kind of realign some of those fibers. It also, um, because we're very specific with kind of where, you know, depending upon what we assess, is it, um, it creates almost like a little micro trauma. So if you've ever heard of like micro fracture surgeries where they like peck on the bone and yeah, create yeah. bleeding to help stimulate healing, to try to get cartilage and kind of knees and shoulders and elbows and stuff, is um, it basically does that to the soft tissue where you basically get the soft tissue a little bit of micro trauma where it brings bleeding in there, not enough to like, you know, internally bleed, but, um, and then your brain now sends all these healing agents to basically those specific tissues rather than you taking like a medicine or whatever else, so it has to go down and break through your whole body. We can be very specific with kind of, um, certain Location. areas. Exactly right. Um, you know, the crazy part with some of our muscles that people don't kind of realize either is, uh, <clears throat> within like the neck and shoulders and stuff is you have muscles in your shoulders that a lot of times almost refer down like nerves. So because they share, similar nerve pathways is that you can have you know some some almost like tingling sensation or pain in your forearm and sometimes it's not your forearm sometimes it's muscles up in the so, back of your yeah. shoulder blade or whatever else you know having a referred kind of pain or some kind of ridiculous kind of reaction just based on kind of tension and things like that so for preventative stuff going back to the mm -hmm. knees preventative stuff for the knees what do you say just strength training like leg extension leg <clears throat> curls squats but not go crazy but yeah. to keep the joint tight yeah because you there's, you don't really do mobility for your knee, do you? Um, Other than stretching your basic stretches? I, 
think more than you think as far as oh, I, really? and, yeah, and, and, and when I say that I mean more so your mobility stuff is any of these stretches that you know you, that, that we're doing with you know any kind of butterfly yeah, yeah. stuff you know you know one leg in front of the other my legs at constantly a different angle so this is putting different strain and stretch through these muscles and also through these ligaments yep so you're getting a lot of mobility without From thinking that. yeah, without thinking oh. that you're getting mobility All right. and then the strength training is perfect the biggest thing with um, any of the strength stuff is just you know really being cognizant of your mechanics with things as far as you know if I'm doing squats and my knees are kind of rolling in and whatever here things work most efficiently when they're in a straight line if I have everything kind of aligned in a straight line here when I go to squat and sit up it goes in a straight line if my legs are kind of turned in here now this force has to be rerouted so our technique just like you know jiu-jitsu kind of whatever else is important because if you start practicing bad technique with things it might not be the first or the third or the hundredth squat you do over time we're going to have inefficiency with how we're bearing that weight and then that kind of poses different kind of injury risks it's, for it's over the long term you're mm -hmm. slowly 100%. damaging yep now that what you were saying before about and I I've heard of that too where like a uh, little damage uh, uh, repetitive to, yeah yeah stuff. so would that be is that similar to like a PRP shot when you get that because they rush I don't even now here's the thing with that like because I was looking at it and there was one thing I was going to do where they drill into your your hip and they take stem cells out of it and inject it. And then yeah, there was yeah. another one that I ended up doing, not that one, where they just took my blood, put it Centrifuge. in a... Centrifuge. Yeah, yeah, and mm -hmm. they put it back in. And they were like, well, you might get a little lightheaded because it feels like everything's rushing there like a traumatic injury. Mm -hmm. And um, I was like, okay, so what's the point of that? Is that the, is that a, because uh, they kind of said it's like stem cell, but it's not stem cell because it's not legal here and it's controversial yeah, yeah, yeah. and all that. That's why everybody flies to Germany and yeah, those yeah, places. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, um, to, You know, all the pro athletes fly out of, out of the country. But yeah, so a lot of the, um, the PRP is typically more like you said, the blood with the, the centrifuge they take. It's like a, basically a high test blood that they kind of put back it's your own blood they put back in your yeah. body um some of the stuff that people don't uh know about some of that stuff though is, is uh, a lot of times there were protocols after like you're not allowed to do certain things for a certain duration of time yeah and the, that kind of stuff is going to be more predicated for like soft tissue injuries like um you know if you have partial rotator cuff tears yeah, or whatever so, yeah. else is um they can help to kind of help mend some of the um, you know the damaged tissue and stuff like that um, you know, and then once we get the tissue mended, then it's twice as important then to make sure we're not putting ourselves in bad positions where we're constantly kind of rubbing it again and kind of correcting the mechanical issue okay. a little bit. Um, you know, the stem cell stuff, um, like, yeah, like you said, you, they don't do much of that here because it's yeah. Uh, yeah. not FDA approved and, or whatever You hear it's else. the greatest thing, it's but you're like, yeah. It's supposed to be amazing. Yeah. Like, like you said, you hear all those athletes that go Tiger yeah, Woods and everything yeah. else go overseas for it and they're fountain of youth, I guess. Yeah. But, um, you know, I, I'm not as familiar with that stuff. I, I see a lot of, uh, I shouldn't see a lot. I see some of the PRP stuff. I see some of the, um, they have other uh, injections like 10X and some other different things. Um, a guy that he actually just opened up his own practice, his name's uh, Dr. Walter Sussman, does a lot of that PRP 10X kind of stuff like that. He just opened a practice in Wellesley. Um, he used to, he was awesome with, um, you know, again, educating me on like why he does it for certain people and kind of whatever else. And you know, that's kind of the whole basis of like a physician and a therapist is to be able to communicate Work with things. Work together, yeah. Um, because I can relay different things to him that maybe you couldn't about your shoulder or your knee. Yeah, you're like, yeah. it hurts. It freaking hurts when I do this. Yeah, you know, why yeah. is that? You know, versus me saying, okay, it hurts when he's, you know, externally rotated because of the you know, way his shoulder is kind of, you know, um, you know, rounded forward or ever else in certain positions. So it sometimes allows them to paint a little bit different picture just because they're so clinical. Yeah, yeah. But uh, I mean, I just think the, the communication with anything, any of those kind of procedural things, and even just surgically is, um, you know, is, is important to have the therapist and kind of the physician kind of hopefully on the same page. And if the physician knows um, anything about kind of like the movements involved in jiu-jitsu and whatever else, their protocol should be a little bit different than somebody who's just trying to get back to, you know, running the, a straight 100-meter yeah. dash or whatever else. Yeah, because I, I, um, I went to one years and years ago, and, um, you know, you have a wide range of people in that f physical therapy office, from yeah. the elderly to young kids. And, uh -huh. you know, uh, some people just want to be comfortable walking. Mm -hmm. Other people have, you know, different athletics. Goals, yeah, so, yeah, it definitely... This that one place was kind of just a blanket answer for everybody. Yeah, that's where I started searching, pe you know, yeah. searching people out like you, mm -hmm. um, and that's why I think it's so important to get somebody like you for people in our community to get to you, mm -hmm. um, because yeah, there's so many things that are specific, and you'll be able to relate to where somebody else is like, oh, you know, you're fine, just walk down, you know. Yeah, exactly. Um, or, or when they say, do you really need to do jujitsu? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you want to see me with a month not doing it? Yeah, no, exactly. Yeah, Come I had, I had, yeah, I had a doctor one time tell me, "Hey, you need a new line of work," and I'm like, "Well, that's not going to happen. Yeah, this right. is what I do." Mm -hmm. You know, 
Um, so as far as shoulder mobility and different exercises you can do to strengthen the shoulder, like say rotator cuff tears and different injuries you have that, you know, maybe like you need surgery, but you don't necessarily have mm -hmm. to. Like I was told three different times, yeah, mm -hmm. surgery. And I, you know, I've seen a ton of people go to surgery mm -hmm. and I've seen a ton of people not happy with it. And I, I'm sure a lot of it is, uh, because they're not doing the full PT. Because from mm -hmm. what I understand, the shoulder one is the biggest pain in the ass. Yeah, moves moves so much. You yeah, need lots, of, lots of different motions. So what are things um, you can do? You know, those things like you said with the bands and different movements you can do that would help keep these people mobile, strong to where they can keep performing. <clears throat> yeah, a lot of it's scapular stability. A lot of it's um, you know everybody thinks like the overhead pressing stuff or whatever else. I mean, yeah. I'm a big proponent with um, bands and body weight stuff. I mean, because you know especially you know functionally functional wise as far as when we're when we're rolling and grappling you don't have 10 pound dumbbells in your hands and yeah. whatever else and also those are weighted perfect mm -hmm. so you can say it. it's like you know you might be able to lift 300 pounds in a military press 100%. but take a 300 pound man you're and not pushing pension, yeah it's and not it's not happening. just your shoulders you have to use you yeah. know, you're in different positions you know a lot of it's predicated on you know neck and head position as far as because these muscles are you know all interrelated so a lot of stuff that i that i kind of um i really kind of harp on is it's a lot of scapular stuff you know a lot of band stuff where you know if we're always forward we need to do more things where we're drawing things back yeah um, because because again, that kind of that more neutral position here allows me to be real mobile. If my shoulders are all rolled forward, and I try to, you know, if somebody was going to paintbrush me here, yeah, if I, this is all I have for motion, you're gone. I'm, I'm done. Yeah, right. My shoulders in a better position here it frees up a little bit of wiggle room, and this is part of the reason why certain escapes that we use for certain things for the shoulders, you know, you're gonna. It, a lot of it's predicated on changing your position yeah. a little to get out. Yep. But uh, you know, mobility wise, you know, I'm a big proponent of um, you know. <clears throat> like I said, the foam roller kind of lying down on the foam roller. There's all kinds that pretend I had a foam roller under my back. You know, things where we can basically kind of, you know, do flies out to the side. And again, the foam roller elevates me a little bit. So I get a little bit of an extra elongation through my chest. Um, I'm a big person, one arm versus the other. You can do the same thing kind of going overhead. Uh, I do what do you mean one versus the other? Doing one at a time? Yeah, rather, rather than here doing both is that as I come out here, a lot of times I'm going to get a little bit more kind of lumbar compensation through my back. Yeah. <clears throat> with this here, it also makes me stabilize with my, my other side. You know, so if, as far as if my arm's out to here, you know, if I was trying to base to get up, yeah. you know, this is going to be a lot different as far as I'm... Robbie, can you see that from there? Do you want to, to spin? Maybe show his head? Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> you know, so as far as... Imagine if I had a foam roll under my back here, so my... my my upper uh, spine stable and my lower spine stable is it allows my shoulder to come beyond kind of my chest. But when I'm doing things kind of with both arms here, because of just how tight I am, my back's naturally going to kind of arch Lift, up a yeah. little bit. <clears throat> when I have this one arm up here, it adds, it makes me recruit more of my core to kind of keep me stable a little bit. And like I said, from a balancing standpoint too, when we're talking about kind of working uh, cohesively kind of with everything is I find it a little bit more functionally applicable to kind of have one arm up rather than kind of doing both at the same time. Yeah. Same kind of thing overhead. If I try to keep myself, you know, in a perfectly straight line here, I'm going to get pinching at my shoulder here just from the nature of how the joints aligned. aligned. If I come out more like kind of like a Y, I get extra motion here. And again, because I'm not paying attention to my trunk here, as you'll see in my spine, because I, I have a lot more motion when I arch my back versus if I just kind of stay here and one side doesn't move as much as the other. And that's where a lot of this stuff kind of... Um, you know, it all kind of affects one another. Even people don't think that you can your lumbar spine and like your lower back affect your shoulder motion yeah. and like your hips and stuff like that. Yeah, you're just thinking of that one area. <clears throat> and that's where a lot of it is. You can kill a bunch of birds with kind of one stone with, um, you know, kind of getting into multiple positions. You know, we can do, you know, hip flexor stretching here where I keep my hip in a position. But if I stretch my hip flexor and my back arches like this, you're now, it. well, now my brain only associates my hip flexor being fle uh, stretched when my spine's like this. And I don't walk around like this. Yeah, yeah, Same yeah. Same kind of thing we'll see people doing, um, you know, if I was in a doorway or whatever, like a pec stretch, they try to put both hands flat, and now they go to lean in, and it's all their low back. So now my brain only associates my chest as being stretched when my spine's in this position, rather than kind of being more of our neutral kind of functional positions, kind of, you know, we yeah, usually yeah. use for kind of, you know, more Combat athletic sports, kind yeah. of things. Um, you know, same kind of deal. You can get my hip flexor here. You know, you pull a band apart here. Now we're engaging my hip flexor, which is, you know, going to help with kind of spine control here. And then again, <clears throat> getting my shoulder blades to rotate back. Um, you know, what happens is you give somebody a band, oh, pull the band apart. 
They'll do it 16,000 yeah. different ways where they're not recruiting the right things. So that's where the, you know, if I pull the band apart and my shoulders yeah. are drawing up, now if I go to use my arms, I'm not creating that kind of yeah. optimal range for my what shoulders. What is that, a natural thing to just so you can do it? Because if maybe uh -huh. they have their shoulders back, they're a little weaker. 100%. Or, yeah. it's, uh, and, and it's just the way that kind of, you know, I'm, I'm just as guilty of that even in my earlier days of training. Like when you go to the gym, right? 100%. You'll see people lift their butt off a bench. Mm. You'll do all these crazy things. Oh, when things. I was in high school, I was the worst person in the world. I yeah. had people come up and, you know, you know how people are with unsolicited advice. You know you shouldn't be doing that. That doesn't look good. I'm like, what are you talking? About? I know what I'm doing. Yeah, you know? and yeah. And I'm yeah. looking back. I'm like, wow, I was an asshole, huh? Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah. You know, no wonder why I blew out a knee. You know, two years later. Yeah. But uh, and that's you know, sometimes it's also an ego check for people. I get people who are high level, you know, high level athletes. As far as I've worked with a bunch of real high level CrossFit people, um, one or two professional hockey players, a lot of high level jujitsu and uh, MMA fighters yep. and stuff. And, uh, you know, for me to tell somebody that their flexibility sucks or, uh, you know, they're weak or they yeah. need to build strength, they're like, do you know who you're talking to right now? Yeah, like, yeah. Like, like Big Mike? Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. Like, Dude, I'm like, Mike, your shoulder stability sucks, bro. He's like, he's like, yeah. yeah. Ask the guy on the contender series that yeah, knocked yeah. out. Yeah, the like, guy oh, okay. just dropped. Yeah. Right. I'm, like, I'm just saying that as a friend. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sometimes you gotta, I, I work on my delivery a little more. Rather than it yeah. sucks, is it's less than optimal. But at the same time, you, know, you got to be open. You got to be open because you're never good enough. I don't care what anyone <laughs> says. You're never good enough. <laughs> But yeah, so earlier you mentioned chiropractic. So mm -hmm. I've never been a big fan. I think I went once or twice way back in the day. Mm -hmm. um, and I think you're hearing more and more it being questioned. Um, I've always just said to people like, oh, something's wrong, go to a physical therapist. Mm -hmm. Go exercise, physical therapist, you know, whatever. My biggest thing is drink more water. I don't know why I tell everyone drink right. more water. That's a big one. But, <laughs> I agree. But um, what, do you, what do you feel with, uh, with that field? Like, and again, I don't, I don't know if you have friends and I don't no, want you to insult no, anyone, no, no. but like... Oh, I, I mean, I don't pull punches. Yeah, if, if you're going to get it, you know, I can have somebody neck crank me in class for free. Yeah. Why am I going to go there and have somebody jump on? Like, I went to a woman. Uh, she was, like, jumping on my legs this way, pushing my shoulders this way. And it felt like it just made everything worse. For something. Yeah, yeah, it felt worse. And that's where it's um, it's also it's person dependent, too, with certain things. Is, is Some people don't like the idea of being adjusted. Yeah. Um, and like I said, I'm being very politically corrected by saying adjusted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, is... Um, is I mean you're hearing horror stories yeah. from this well, now, and that's where it's also about you know the business aspect of things versus the medical you know application of things is you know those offices. Well, just because it's a business doesn't mean it's it's, it's good for you. Hundred yeah. percent. So you, know, you also I mean I have people all the time that come in and they get you know issues. Oh you know whatever I haven't um I haven't, I haven't had a bowel movement in four days. My back's killing me. Well, what the hell? Like yeah. that's not good. We're supposed to poop every day. Yeah like, yeah yeah. You know go to your primary. You know uh, you know get some freaking laxative. Call your primary. Whatever yeah. else. Maybe a back two, hurts, kidneys, or something's going on. She's back up. <laughs> Two days later, I felt amazing. Well, guess what? Yes, you're supposed to have bowel movements. Yeah. So that's a lot of times, like I said, you got to find. We didn't do anything. Just go go to the home yeah. and go to the bathroom. Yeah. Um, but that's also picking, you know, and that's where a lot of times getting a history, you know, having a conversation with people about things helps to determine whether people are appropriate or not. Even with the dry needling stuff, some people hate needles. You know, yeah. worst thing in the world. I'm not going to push them on them if they don't. Yeah, if they yeah, don't yeah. Think. This way, I did stuff before I learned how to dry needle uh, that corrected a lot of these things. Yeah, sometimes it takes a little bit longer. Okay, yeah, it takes yeah. another two weeks to get to where you're at. So what? Yeah. Um, so there's always avenues around it. The chiropractic stuff, um, you know, they do things better than me as far as I, you know, I do do some joint um, adjustments. I'm not going to call them manipulations. Um, you know, that's primarily what they do. For certain things, um, I think that they can be helpful. Um, yeah. The biggest thing is, again, is just having somebody you're comfortable with who will educate you and will kind of work around with yeah. what you're comfortable with. Um, I'm always afraid of the neck thing. How, that's, I mean, uh, how many that's people like do you know? They 50% of the people, I think, are yeah. afraid of the neck thing. Like, um, you know, you move the neck the wrong way. I mean, I, I just read something where somebody was adjusting themselves and they actually got paralyzed for like a month or two. Or yeah, something. yeah, it's um, you know, it's sensitive stuff. And, uh, you know, I, in my opinion, too, they should always do um, before you get adjusted, you should always have x-rays done just to make sure that there's no, um, you know, bony abnormalities or any yeah. of that kind of stuff that, you know, that, that they're not aware of. Um, you know, there's some pretty standard ones, like, you know, people do the middle of the back, you yeah. know, crack them. Um, you know, as far as uh, the biggest thing with any of that stuff, whether you like it, whether you don't like it, is you got to find something that makes you comfortable. You. Um, and then after you go and see those professions, whether it's therapist, whether it's um, chiropractic stuff, is that you do the homework, like the little maintenance -y stuff. I mean, the people who give you a pamphlet of 12 exercises um, and don't explain how to do any of them, then go pound sand because yeah. they're giving the same that 12. That happens a lot, right? Get, oh, it's awful. Yeah. That's the cookie cutter. Yeah. Everybody gets the same thing. Um, and, you know, and that's just lazy, yeah. in all honesty. Um, you know, but if you have to come back three times 
times a week and pay a copay and whatever else. You know, some of those people are happy that way. Yeah. Um, you know, me, me myself. Because the goal is not to have you as a recurring customer in that field, correct? In, in, in my opinion, it is. Uh, you yeah. know, like I said, I'm obviously not a great businessman if yeah. everybody gets fixed. But, uh, but no, it, it's also word of mouth. And if you get somebody to trust you once, they're going to trust you again the next time. Because, yeah. you know, especially in this, in this environment is, yeah. um, like you said, neck pulls, you know, yeah. calves are going to get tight. You're going to get, you know, a little hyperextended one day or whatever else. I had a guy uh, just today who I saw earlier about uh, a hyperextended elbow. Um, you know, and it's just like, you know, it's not the end of the world. Yeah. Okay, let's, you know, let's, First let's thing, tap, tap before it hurts. Oh, yeah, that's <laughs> usually what we, we start tap, talking about. Tap, now let me work on right. you. And, uh, and, yeah, but, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's, 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 it's kind of medicine's in a tough spot right now, especially with, uh, you know, the, just the cost of everything and yeah. whatever else. And, you know, it's, it's like anything, though. Um, you know, you kind of pay for what you get for a lot of times. So if you think, oh, you know, you think a consult's free or if you think, uh, you know, I have a, you know, zero copay or whatever else, there's no deductible, I'm just going to go to the place across the street. Yeah. Well, you're going to get probably zero copay, zero deductible, place across the street kind of quality, unless you know the person. Well, yeah, I mean, that's like anything, like jujitsu. Mm -hmm. You know, you can go somewhere for 20 bucks a week. It's a part-time school. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, there's nobody there running the program mm -hmm. or you can pay a little, like anything in life. 100%. Right? I'm a big believer in uh, a lot of that stuff is, uh, you know, you put out what you get in. I mean, uh, you get you get out what you put in, and yeah. uh, and just you know being um, you know proactive with making sure you do your research to you know to talk to people who have had similar things or um, you know do your research. The internet's an amazing resource right now for being able to kind of you know find little um, kind of angles to be able to help yourself. What do you feel about uh, all the different traction machines that you can just go to Brooks, CVS, whatever it is, and just buy? Yeah. I've seen like I actually bought one. Um, from, you know, it was referred, actually my brother-in-law let me use it. And then I found out my physical therapist at the time was like, yeah, this is the one we use. So yeah, I was Saunders, like, okay, yeah, it's like a ramp, but yeah. I've seen so many crazy ones that I've had students do where they're hanging themselves. Yeah, it's, oh, it's I'm like, oh my God, you're going to kill yourself. I saw one where it's like a, a like a, a tire tube around you pump yeah, it you up. Pump it up. Like, are those terrible? or no, so, uh, The Saunders ones are good. The Saunders yeah, ones the are ramp good, the where ramp. you have the levels mm -hmm. and you pump it. Yeah. yeah. And the big thing just with any of that stuff is, like, less is more. Is, uh, yeah. you know, you, you, well, that's the other thing I was going to ask you, too, is because I first day I sat in that thing, I, it was probably, like, 30 minutes, and I'm cranking it, cranking it. Yeah. And then I'm like, yeah, I think that was bad. <laughs> <laughs> right, then all of a sudden your muscles pull everything back yeah. out and you can't move. Um, you know, and that's where, like, you know, the – a lot of times the tools are easy to get. You know, it's like they sell saws at Lowe's. And yeah. There are some people who shouldn't ever buy a saw. You know oh, I mean? yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so sometimes, you know, with, with some of the stuff, there's there's certainly instruction that should be kind of provided with it. Um, but with any of those devices, like the traction, that kind of stuff, um, less is more. I think, you know, I think if I remember back to uh, the, the school stuff is like they really don't advise more than 20 pounds of pressure. Okay. Um, you know, the things go up to like 60. So you yeah, wonder why crank. the hell, why the hell would you make it yeah. hold And that how much? long would you do it? Like um, intervals. So to start with anything, you know, you got to kind of build your tolerance with things. Yeah. You know, anywhere, you know, five to 10 minutes to start. And then as you feel comfortable, you know, a week or two in, you know, you know, 10 or 15 minutes. Um, again, it's just more of an adjunctive thing. That's going to help to decompress things. And then it's a matter of same kind of idea with some of the scapular stabilization stuff. Because all these muscles that help um, in the back of my shoulders would also help to stabilize my head a lot. Yeah. So by building up a nice strong kind of, you know, these retractable back muscles is they um, assist in stability of the spine. So once you get that, um, that traction or that space, you know, decompression, is then you want to train to maintain it a little bit by getting the soft tissues to hold you better. And, and when you mentioned uh, about buying saws and all that, it just uh, brought something up. So that massage gun, gun yeah. everybody was like running out buying mm -hmm. like cordless things, <laughs> making these rigs. And oh, I yeah. was like, holy crap, I'm seeing these things. And I ended up getting one. I had uh, whatever. There's always something going on, right? Mm -hmm. But I had something. So I was like using it. And it's pretty cool if it's something here. But, you yeah, know, if you can't get a certain spot. Yeah, a lot of times you're like this. Yeah. And, you know, begging somebody to do it. But mm -hmm. w like... Uh, Bad idea to go get a Black & Decker and uh, hook a tennis ball or what? Arguably might do the same thing. Just, yeah, yeah. You know, just with anything like that, too. Just some, don't put just, that thing on 10. Yes, exactly. It's, it's, you know, find a therapeutic range. What I consider, you know, uh, pain is a sensation. So, you know, pain is like knife, you know, like knife stabbing, sharp, like yeah. really shooting kind of stuff. You know, intensity-wise, pain, um, you know, really bad pain is like that 7, 8, 9 out of 10. Yeah. If you're in like a 2 to 3 out of 10 or, you know, 3 or 4 out of 10, it's like a pulling, a stretching, a pressure. Yeah. Um, a little bit of a burn, a little bit of an ache. Those are kind of therapeutic ranges. 
like yeah. where you can relax and breathe and still get some change. Um, you know, so it's kind of, you know, working in the realm of what's, um, I don't want to say comfortable because it's usually not all that comfortable, but yeah. also in the realm of what um, you can kind of tolerate. Because if, if I'm doing something and I'm tense the whole time it's happening, you're kind of you're not being counterproductive with that. Yeah. Exactly. So, you know, versus you turn the thing down a little bit and you're like, oh, that's a little bit uncomfortable, but you don't yeah. have to tighten up. Your body's going to be the biggest kind of... Um, it's gonna, it's gonna basically compensate and kind of warn you if something's not yeah. good. It's funny. I think the pain tolerance thing is weird too, because uh, uh, or gauging your own pain. Because I feel like the longer you train, you're just used to being uncomfortable. <laughs> so like, yeah. uh, like uh, last week at the gym with my son, we tr we lift whatever, and we're doing exercises, and I'm like, well, my shoulder's killing me. Mm -hmm. And it's not muscle sore. It's not. It, I know it's joint, but I'm like, ah, mm -hmm. tough through it. And then it's like, yeah, no wonder why, dumbass. Your shoulder hurts all the time. <laughs> like, at what point do you go, okay, this is the bad pain? You right. know, um, I, I feel like that for people that have trained. Uh, or that used train. to being uncomfortable. Yeah, so you it's almost hard. get, you know, you, you start doubting yourself. What is real pain, and what is, you know, mm -hmm. hey, push through and toughen up. You yeah, know? and that's where like you just gotta kind of. Uh, a lot of it's if, if you feel like you get to a certain point and it's not supposed to go past yeah. that point, um, that's probably not a good. That's point. it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. Listen to your body. Right. Well, you know, and it sounds it sounds as simple as that. Yeah. But, you know, it's hard. I mean, people are trained now to you know, especially you know, I'm gonna say young men, but some young men not as much anymore. I feel like it's yeah, a different it's, society. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Different animal though all day is uh is you know people are taught you know you have to be tough, suck it up, you know, yeah. you know whatever else. Well, what point is sucking it up actually being detrimental yeah. to you being able to also be effective and also kind of, um, you know, be able to stay active with things? Yeah. Um, and that's a conversation I have a lot with high school athletes and a lot of college athletes. Yeah. Okay, so we can a go getter. Yeah, we can take three, two. We can take a week or two off and get this to calm down so that we can then yeah. build it back up for a week or two. Or you can push through it and be miserable and potentially hurt it worse. Yeah, I, it's um, funny. You, uh, I, I actually heard somebody on, uh, I think it was a podcast or something. They were saying, and this can relate to anybody. You're mm -hmm. like, okay, you're injured, and you just keep coming and training, coming and training, but you're not getting that same quality and you're 100%. not getting the same output, mm -hmm. but you're on the mat. Mm -hmm. But yet, if you just took a day or two off, mm -hmm. you would have been way better off. And, and they, they kind of mapped it out in a year of how much training you actually got and how much quality training compared mm -hmm. to, hey, I have broken ribs. I'm going to do a lidocaine patch and keep training. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, and... Uh, yeah, so I, you know, even stuff like that, you know, you almost it's always have balance. to kind of put yourself in check a little yeah. bit, right? And it's hard. And it's hard. I mean, you know, obviously people have goals with you know progressing, you know, you know, different belts and kind of yeah. whatever else. And you know, the only way you can, you know, accomplish that is by being present. But you know, if you're like you said, if you're present at fifty percent capacity, yeah, you know, is that is that doing you any better yeah, than yeah. you know maybe missing a, a week or two just to kind of let something mend and then yeah. coming back you know full tilt? Yeah, and how you? much further did you set yourself physically? One hundred percent. Yeah, because yeah. the longer you let something be naggy, it's going to take longer and longer to heal. Yeah. Um, but. So before before we start wrapping this up, mm -hmm. um, gi or no gi? What one's better? Uh, what would you like more? I gotta Joe's go, not listening. I gotta go gi right now, man. Ah, I'm, yes. ho I'm hooked on the gi right yes. now. I'm hooked we, on we it. We right got now. yeah, we hooked but, you. Uh, I, I don't, you know, in it, it's, it sounds terrible because especially like during COVID, we had like a cohort system with, yeah. with Joe's. So you got the same eight eight people I think we had, could have or whatever. And um, you know, so I got very lazy with the you know, you if I rolled with you, you know, only you for you know, yeah, you get used like to what months, I play, what you and play, and then I can be lazy types. and whatever else. The gi, um, the gi's cool, man. I uh. I love, uh, like, uh, just a guy like Carlos, uh, yes. who's been yeah, coming yeah. in, like, I'm like, oh, God, I'm like, yeah, he's smaller than me. Okay, maybe I can, oh, I can't hold him anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> why is, you know, why can't I move my arm and it's tied yeah, across yeah. my body now and he's just kind of looking at me being nice. But uh, It's like the great equalizer, different sizes, different ages, whatever you put the gi on, and uh, it kind of takes a lot of that athletic ability. Ian, most of my group who did the no gi I came coming up have all transitioned more to gi training. Oh, nice. Like, you know, like I said, the Cushmans, the Talbots, the yeah, 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 and whatever yeah. else. So, um I'm like, oh god, I have to be able to fit back in with them. Yeah. I just need, I'm a little, I'm a couple of years behind though. Yeah, <laughs> but catching up quick. Hopefully, cool. But uh, so, Rich, where can people find you? Um, you know, I want, I want everybody in this area to come find you. Yeah. Uh, you know, you're, you're a true uh, treasure for New England. I think uh, for anybody that's into combat sports. So, you know, again, I've been to a bunch of physical therapists and some that were amazing. But there is a whole nother thing when you talk to somebody that is in the field yeah. of where you're, mm -hmm. you know, unfortunate where your injuries are coming from and how to maintain them and mm -hmm. uh, get you back on the mat as soon as possible. Yeah. I work, uh, I work full time at Marathon uh, Physical Therapy in Easton. And then I also have uh, an office in the front of uh, Joe's gym right now where uh, 
Uh, so Lowe's on MMA. Lowe's What's on, the yep. address? Do you know uh, the address? Uh, it's like 500 uh, Southwest uh, Rainham. Yeah. So Route 44 Route Rainham, 44, Google yeah. Lowe's on MMA. Yeah. So we got a room up there, too. Um, I'm there whenever I'm not at my regular job. And uh, going to just, you know, like I said, my whole goal is uh, I like training. and It's way more fun to train with more people than it is yeah, less people if people are getting hurt. So, um, no, it's... Uh, it's cool. Like I said, I got to learn a bunch by a bunch of different injuries just by being exposed into the combat sports kind of element. With uh, I got to practice a lot when I was younger on guys like Joe and Joe Cushman yeah. and stuff like that. So they got all my bad years. Now I'm I'm a I'm a well-oiled machine well, yeah. now. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I'm just joking, Joe. <clears throat> but uh, but no, it's uh, it's cool. And uh, like I said, I think the biggest thing you'll you'll get out of anything. <clears throat> if you do have to come and utilize anything that I do is uh, I'm going to teach you about how to not let it happen again and hopefully kind of preserve not just that but other things just to yeah. kind of keep everybody on the mats. That's good. And now, uh, are you on any of the social media platforms <clears throat> or any no, of that I'm stuff? No, I'm a, I'm a caveman when it comes to that yeah. kind of stuff. So, yeah. um, you know, Danny, Danny's got contact information for me. Uh, Joe's got my information and I'm, I'm good with a text or cell phone call right Perfect. now. Hopefully at some point I'll get on the social media bandwagon but, uh, that stuff gives me anxiety. Yeah, no, I hear you. <clears throat> Rich, thanks so much for Thank coming on. Thank you very on. much, Thanks, Danny. Guys, go train jujitsu. Thank you.